All right, um, there are two things we're going to be testing in the, these AFMs over here. Two of these are early, one of these is late. Pardon the clutter, I've been doing some other projects. Uh, so there's two things we're going to look at, and one of which is the temperature sensor built into it, and the other is the actual flap uh, potentiometer. So uh, this is a chart from FR Wilkes, and you can find it online. Let me uh, show you. If you Google search test 944 AFM, you'll get this nice page. And if it's not online, uh, whenever you watch this video, well, I'll try and kind of go over everything that this, you know, touches, including the actual numbers and readings that you should expect. So anyway, this is a great site to read first before you do anything. And I'll be concentrating on early AFMs just because I have an early car. But this should all be applicable to late AFMs. And if you read the page, you'll see kind of what you'd really have to change. Now this is kind of be pretty important, and I've actually went and printed it off so I could physically take it over there and put it next to me. So go ahead and print off whichever one of these applies to you. There's one for a late car there. These are just different curves. And uh, we're going to start with the temperature reading. And I went ahead and made an Excel spreadsheet here, which I'll put up uh, as a link. And essentially all this does is it takes some of these published figures, which are from that website I just showed you, and these are in Celsius, um, just because it makes the plotting a lot easier because you're starting at zero instead of starting at 32. And these are the minimum and maximum resistances measured in kilo ohms that you should expect to read from the AFM at these temperatures. And these aren't linear curves, so I curve fitted uh, just a second order polynomial here. And those are the two equations you can use to derive what the resistance reading should be, you know, minimum or maximum at the temperature you're in. So I'm doing these inside, and I think it's about 73 degrees in this room. I need to turn the thermostat down a little bit. But anyway, and I'm, I'm an American, and so I know that's in Fahrenheit. So I made a little, you know, equation here. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 73. And when I do that, so the other numbers here change. This is just a function of this. So 22, call it 23 Celsius. And these are the two resistances I should expect to see. And, you know, if you look at the chart here, we can see right around there, that makes sense, going across those intersects there. And so I should be getting a resistance reading somewhere between these two numbers, 1.94 and 2.51, which I'm going to write down on my paper, 1.94 and 2.51. And I'm going to put 73 degrees Fahrenheit. There is a small tolerance on these. 10% uh, tolerance according to FR Wilkes, and so uh, you know we'll just see what we get. This is the same data I have up here, but in Fahrenheit. So let's go and actually uh, put in our multimeter. For this, you'll just need uh, obviously a multimeter, and I have some test leads that we're going to use for the flap angle later. So uh, let's go ahead and since I really only have one hand because I'm using my phone to film this. I'm going to use some of these test leads to unhook it up, but you really don't need that. So this is the AFM actually that I want to test. I actually have not used this in my car. I actually have a mass airflow sensor from Rogue Tuning in my car right now, but I might be putting one of these in for some testing diagnostic uh, for a related issue I, I might be having with the system. So you'll notice that this is a five pin connector. Let's see if my camera would zoom, sorry, focus. Let's see if there's not a better angle but you'll only see that there are four pins in this five pin connector. Uh, the leftmost pin just isn't there. So I'm going to be calling these pins one, two, three, four from left to right, so with pin one being the leftmost. Uh, but if you look up here you can see six, nine, twenty-two, or sorry, six, nine, seven, twenty-two, and I believe those are the DME pins that these go to fr uh, you know, through the main harness. So the rightmost is pin twenty-two in the DME, and that is the temperature sensor pin. Uh, pin 6, or I, as I said before, pin 1, the leftmost, is a ground pin, so we'll be measuring everything relative to ground here. So for this uh, temperature sensor test, we're going to be, of course, using the ground and the temperature sensor pin I just said, which are pins 1 and 4. So I'm going to put one uh, of these alligator clips here on pin 1, and one of these on pin 4, aka pin 22. And on here, I uh, wrote that down, just uh, so... You'll get weird readings if you don't do that. So, and I already know your multimeter may be different, but on mine, this uh, black wire, and this is a really cheesy, crappy $10 
multimeter that I uh, got at Walmart probably more than a year ago. And I have a nicer digital one in my car, but I just don't feel like going down to get it. So I know that the black wire here is going to be the ground pin. And so for measuring resistances, it doesn't really matter the polarity, but it will matter later for the voltage testing. Otherwise, you know, the needle will try and sink into, well, it's already all the way over there. We need it to go that way. So you'll see what I mean. But I'm going to go ahead and just hook this up. Uh, you, can, you don't need to do all this if you have two hands free, but like I said, I'm just trying to do this. And, uh, of course, pin 22. Oh, that's not good. Well, that's why. Here. I still have my multimeter set to voltage. So we're going to set it to, uh, of course, measuring resistance. And, well, see, it's already pegged. So we need to put it on the setting for kilo ohm. So this is times 1K. And so right now we're already reading, let's see. Well, it's pegged. So let's go to there. This is times 100 ohm. So that is right around uh, 20... Hmm. No, sorry, 1950 ohms, so 1.95, maybe almost 2.0 kilo ohms. If you look over here at our tolerances, that is in the tolerance, and it is possible that my room temperature, you know, precision was off. It might be closer to, you know, like 75 in here, which would affect that slightly. But uh, that is the reading that we wanted. And on a digital multimeter, this would be a lot easier. I, I really don't like how there's like literally like four or five different scales on this face right here. It kind of makes things cluttered and you never really know what you're looking at unless you uh, have a lot of experience with that particular multimeter. So anyway, I'm going to unplug these now and move on to the next part, which is measuring the flap angle. I'm going to put this multimeter onto DCV, DC voltage, and I recommend use a 9-volt battery for this test. And uh, as you, if you've already read the website, um, the way this works is it's a potentiometer, which is a varying resistance strip, and there's an input voltage. And it, on, on the early AFMs, it's about, I think it's 12 volts unregulated. But on the late AFMs, it is, I think, 5 volts VREF plus or minus half a volt or something like that. Um, so this test is going to pretty much be for early AFMs because this is a 9-volt battery. You do the math. Um, make sure you use a newer 9-volt battery and verify it beforehand that it is above 8 volts because the minimum voltage this will run on is 8 volts. If it's below 8 volts, you're not going to be able to use this test. So I've already verified that this Harbor Freight battery is right actually at around 9 volts going to this multimeter. And I've already did this test, so uh, this will work. The, uh, of course, if you don't already know this, this is the negative terminal and this is the positive terminal in 9 volt battery. The negative one's a little bit bigger and it usually tells you on the side. So anyway, um, what we're going to do is a little bit of fancy wiring. On the, it's actually really easy, but on the FR Woke website, they have you take off this plastic, you know, plastic cover, and that's great. Uh, mine appears to be, I guess, like epoxy back on or hot glued or something. I don't know. Both of these look like they've already been opened. And actually, this late AFM has some brown, you know, caulking or residue or something around it. So this is an early AFM, and we're going to be looking at this curve here to determine if it's in spec. Now, you'll notice that on the bottom, obviously, you have flap angle, but over here, you have UP over UV. Now, what that is, is the ratio of the input voltage, UP, which I'm sure stands for something in German, and UV is the output voltage. And this is where the other, the other two pins, the middle two, come into play. You have a voltage across pins one and two, which is the input voltage, and uh, that would be 12 volts in a car, you know, that's running and all. In our case, it's going to be 9 volts. As long as it's uh, between 8 and 12, you can use this test. I would not go above 12. You might do damage to the DME. Plus, I'm not even sure where you would get a thing over 12 volts without doing some weird series configuration. Um, now, pin 3, a.k.a. pin 7, I think, whatever, the second from the right is the output voltage, and that's measured also relative to pin 1, which is a ground pin. So we're going to go ahead and set this up, and I'm going to do this with four jumper wires with alligator clips. Um, let's see, how do I want to do this? The easiest thing to do is to just start with the ground, and in our case that's the negative terminal. If you think about, you know, on your car battery it's also the negative terminal. So there's ground, and I'm going to put that on pin number one, like so. And you, 
obviously want to make sure you don't you know have any wires or clips touching here because that will I don't know I don't know it might do damage to the FM but more importantly you're gonna potentially blow the battery up in your face if you hold it there long enough so uh, I'm gonna now put pin 2 on the positive terminal this is our input voltage so there's now 9 volts on the AFM inputs okay so here's where it's gonna kinda get a little bit you know pay attention you have these two multimeter inputs and remember how I said that on mine black is ground aka negative in this case I'm gonna make sure that I use I'm using this white cable here and I'm gonna be sure to put this on the same terminal that I put the pin one uh, alligator clip on which is ground because so we're measuring this output voltage relative to ground okay so this other uh, this is the, you know, plus, you know, I guess in this case it's like plus whatever the output voltage is. Go ahead and hook that up to pin 3. Make sure you don't accidentally hit the other pins. It's kind of getting cramped in there. Let me uh, go ahead and connect this to the hot connection on the multimeter. Okay, that's now hooked up and what we'll be doing is this is now set on DCV with a 10 volt uh, resolution and all, you, all we're going to be doing is literally sticking a hand inside here and pushing that flap open and we're going to be looking at the voltage output as a function of flap angle and when I do this that's about halfway open kind of and I'm kind of moving it back and forth and you can see how that changes now over here um, we don't really know, like when I'm putting my hand in there, you don't really know, oh, that's exactly, you know, 36 degrees or whatever. So this is going to be largely approximating. We're going to be looking for reasonable values. And more importantly, the monoticity, is that how you pronounce it? I, uh, that's a 100-point SAT word from the FR Wilk website, which pretty much means th the reading should be smooth um, and fluid. There should be no, like, jerking around, which is going to, you know, send... A corrupt signal to the DME and garbage in garbage out the car will run like you know complete crap so we're looking for the needle smoothly going up and down roughly following this curve notice how this is kind of a it's 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 a it's not it's kind of a logarithm almost we're starting at zero and instead of it you know literally rising like the late AFM the early AFM really until about halfway and then it starts kind of picking up you have a roughly linear section right here but then it's kind of almost like an exponential over here so the pattern we're going to be seeing is you're going to open it up and the needle's going to kind of slowly start to get up but then toward the end of that flap um, you know sweep it should be going up right around 0.8 really I guess that would that could be projected all the way up to 100 percent when the potentiometer is at the end of its uh, track there so we should expect to be seeing right around 9 volts by the time it's all the way up and against there. So I've been babbling long enough. Let's go ahead and do the test. Let's see how well I can actually do this with one hand. All right, here we go. We're about halfway right there. And uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but that is uh, like half a volt. And... Uh, that makes sense, you know, about halfway, 0.1 of 9 volts. We're pretty, uh, this is really hard to do with one hand. Um, but yeah, see how just as I push it open and let it go back, it's not jumping around, it's fluid. That's a good sign. That means that the, the resistor strip isn't corrupted. I'm going to push it all the way open now. And can you hear it hitting against it? You see how that's right at around 9 volts? Or really, it's between like six and eight which is seven volts and that jives with point eight I guess that is the end 96 never mind what I said earlier about it just being exactly nine volts so that's between six and eight so we're looking at right at around uh, seven volts there and doing some quick math that works actually I didn't do the math I'm just kind of you know eyeball figure there's probably a little bit of tolerance on this but anyway I'm going to unplug all these now before something gets messed up. And that's that. Hopefully this helps you uh, with your AFM. Now, of course, I've pretty much went over the early AFM, of which these are both. And I've already tested both of these, and uh, they appear to be in spec. 
This is a late AFM. You can, of course, tell by the different part number on the top. If you just Google the part number on your AFM, it should, you know... This is a late AFM, 0280-202-064. And the early AFM is, I think it's a 0280-202-028. So, this is the same pinout. This will all apply, just a different curve. Everything is, you know, they go to the same DME pins and everything. So... I don't know, it's kind of not even worthwhile trying to show that. The lighting's pretty poor in here. But if you have any questions or if one of the links I posted goes down, just you know, leave me a message or whatever. Uh, ho or just pause the part in the video where I showed you the numbers. Um, that should really do it for you. Uh, good luck with uh, testing your AFM.